ago. So I've moved away from shipwreck primarily and more into um, prehistoric sites, but I have done a few excavations on shipwrecks before. So, yeah. That's. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this was discovered in the Gulf of Mexico off of Southwest Florida, um, kind of South of Tampa. And it initially was located inland. Um, it was a prehistoric burial essentially. And then once sea level rise started by about 6,000 years ago, the site was inundated and it's now in an offshore context. So I'm trying to study the process of sea level rise at that site and how it affected that site and how portions of it were preserved. And I'm doing that by studying oysters that we found that were attached to cultural material, which kind of indicate that the material was exposed at some point and oysters grew on them. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And so you mentioned the the oysters, are these the same type of oysters that, you know, are found in the Bay today? Are they, are they totally? Yeah. Yeah. They're Eastern oysters or Crassostrea virginica. So, I mean, I don't know when they may have um, attached to cultural material, but hoping to use radiocarbon dating, which can be kind of troublesome on a shell. But so, yeah, investigating these oysters to see when sea level rise was affecting this site. And yeah. And any idea on, you know, of, of course, you know, that's that's a significant site. But do you do you have any idea in terms of are there other similar sites out that have not been discovered or that maybe have been discovered? Probably. Um, if, if we're talking about the prehistoric sites, um, years ago, most archaeologists didn't think they would survive sea level rise. So you imagine like catastrophic waves, you know, crashing on a site if it's located on the coast. I mean, with FPN, you had um, the monitoring scouts that were looking at coastal sites that were being affected by hurricanes. So, I mean, a lot of people thought these things wouldn't really preserve, but more and more with surveys offshore there we're seeing paleo landscapes or relic landscapes that are still intact and if there's a feature in the remote sensing data that looks like a pond a buried pond i mean people gravitate towards water you could maybe expect that sites are also there as well so yeah, I think it's. Just I think incredible. there's more out there. Yeah, yeah. there's. Right. They're definitely hard to find. It's like a needle in a haystack kind of thing, um, but I think they are out there. We just don't know how well preserved some of them are. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, are you familiar with Windover? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's it has some attributes that are similar to Windover which means um, Florida's indigenous groups were originally interring their deceased in the bottom of a peat pond. Peat is like that mucky stuff that you find on the bottom of lakes and, and freshwater body. Um, yeah, and then the peat helped preserve some of these organic artifacts like wooden stakes and cordage. And I mean, the initial preservation of the site that we're looking at in the Gulf of Mexico definitely is attributed to that peat. And we were just shocked after sea level rise, it was still there. <laughs> so parts of it at least. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we were completely surprised because nobody would tell you that a worked wooden stake or even cordage would ha would still be there. <laughs> you know, cordage that dated to like seven thousand two hundred years ago is still there, just in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're you know we still have a lot of research to do, but yeah, yeah. And how how was that site located? You said that they're you know probably rare or maybe not rare, but certainly the ones that have been identified. How was that one? How did that come about? To be this was found be, by a scuba diver. Um, he frequented the area and because there's fossils down there. So people usually dive for, you know, you think shark teeth. Um, and he came across something and he was like, that's that doesn't look like a shark tooth to me. And he ended up calling our office and it turned out to be a human mandible. 
So it was just rolling around on the site, unfortunately, because the site is eroding out of the seafloor. So our job at VAR is to manage sites that are on state lands and in state waters. And so we were called down to kind of figure out where this mandible might have come from. Did it, you know, wash away from the shore? And I mean, we thought initially it, it rolled into the ocean from the shore. Like we wouldn't have thought this thing would have been preserved. And then turns out there was peat coming out of the seafloor. And within the peat, there were embedded um, wooden stakes and then other skeletal material. So, and then it became kind of a management issue because it's like, how do you stop the seafloor from eroding away from this site? And we tried to like sandbag it and protect as much as we can. So we want to be sensitive because, you know, it's a burial. 